Good afternoon everyone and welcome to today's webinar on content marketing for popular and emerging platforms. My name is Helen Hutchings from the Phillips Group and I'm your host for today's webinar. In a moment I will hand you over to today's pre presenter Doug Pye. At the end of the webinar I will hold a questions and answers session with Doug and we look forward to receiving your questions. This webinar is part of a series being provided by the Department of Tourism, Major Events, Small Business and the Commonwealth Games. We hope that you find it informative and useful for your business. Uh, before I hand over to Doug, I'd just like to apologise. We both um, seem to have come down with the office lurgy, so if we're sounding a little bit hoarse. I do apologise for that. I hope you enjoy today's webinar, and Doug, over to you. Thanks, Helen, and uh, you'll probably will notice that I'll get a bit croakier uh, toward the end of the presentation today. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, we're just going to do a quick introduction and orientation about the software and also a little bit about myself. I'll then discuss the key workbook points and uh, provide some examples about how hopefully these will assist you with your business. We'll be covering what the concept of con content marketing is, uh, how can it be applied to the big four social media networks of Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and YouTube. Um, and then we'll discuss an approach to the development of a content marketing strategy. How we'll apply the content marketing to a number of emerging platforms and that'll also inc uh, include Pinterest, Instagram, uh, an emerging platform called Posse, Social, Cam, Vine and Google Plus. At the end of course we'll have some times for uh, Q&A with Helen. On your screen you should see this panel with a questions box so use that uh, to enter a question at any time. As I mentioned uh, we'll get to them at the end of the session uh, and also note that I'm going to ask some polls throughout this webinar. Unfortunately for those using an iPad uh, it's currently not supported by GoToWebinar software so you won't be able to participate in the polls and we do apologise for that. Also don't forget the Twitter hashtag uh, which is hash QLDBIZ uh, throughout the presentation obviously uh, it's important to uh, engage so please feel free to uh, as we move through the presentation. Quickly just a little bit about myself, uh, I'm the marketing director at Philips Group. Uh, I've been here with this company for approximately six years. Um, in that time and throughout my career I've worked with a number of uh, small and large corporates um, to develop um, uh, content marketing strategies and communication strategies uh, to take their businesses forward um, and uh, it's, it's becoming very apparent that our strategies are uh, to become a lot more engaged in the online environment and how the utilisation of two-way communication channels uh, is going to um, further uh, their marketing potential uh, as, we, as we move on. So what is content marketing? It's the concept of how it can help a small business. Um, it's the creation of sharing relevant and valuable content to acquire and retain customers. It's a technique that uses value adding content such as uh, informative comment, uh, image, video or blogs uh, to promote your business or your brand or your product or, or, or your service, whichever industry you're in. It allows you to build a reputation through the communication of valuable and relevant information without the need for a uh, direct sales pitch. Now the aim of content marketing is to influence either your existing or your potential customers to pay attention to your posts. Um, now by getting their attention first through your content, it gives you an opportunity to build improved recognition, trust, uh, reputation and ultimately the potential for conversion into actual business, which is why we're all here today. Uh, if your business has a website or a blog or social media presence, you may actually already be adopting content marketing strategies without even realising it. So just to give you an example, 
Um, there's a recent high profile obviously example of the Red Bull Stratus campaign uh, run by the energy drink um, company Red Bull. Uh, in 2012 Felix Borgmater flew in a helium balloon around 40 kilometres above New Mexico in the United States and once at that height he completed a space dive of about 10 minutes back to earth uh, in a pressure suit and in that process he actually broke the sound barrier uh, during the descent. Um, it's a pretty impressive piece of content marketing and, and from that perspective the reason it was so successful was that Red Bull identified their target markets as youthful and energetic and created a campaign that would appeal to them. Uh, Eight million people watched that jump live on YouTube and the associated news headlines achieved uh, immense um, international exposure, uh, a huge brand recognition without actually pushing their product, the energy drink itself. Now it's obviously a high profile, big budget campaign, but it demonstrates the potential of content marketing to engage with audiences and to um, build brand or, or business reputation. So the differences between um, traditional marketing and content marketing. Uh, we've noticed in recent years that consumers are growing tired of one-way push marketing methods. Um, it, it, it means that more and more people are skipping through commercials and ignoring uh, what we uh, refer to as uh, junk mail. Content marketing takes the brand and, and your company or product or service out of the main focus and it replaces it with content that the customer will value and want to receive. It becomes more about how the product or service can benefit the customer and not the actual uh, product or price point. Um, the example that we've got here with you on screen today, uh, Morton Island Adventures. Now their business is transporting people to and from Morton Island but on their Facebook page rather than advertise a fair price, uh, they're using a video of the beach and sunset to sell the experience of being on Morton Island. For businesses, harnessing content marketing requires the need to uh, shift your thinking from traditional one-way product focused advertising to using accessible two-way dialogue without the focus uh, on the uh, product sell. Building trust and loyalty. Uh, one of the key benefits of content marketing is its ability to generate trust and loyalty for your business. Firstly, recognition from your audience as a topic or industry leader. Um, offering information or advice provided in an engaging way via your website or social platform helps to establish your business's reputation as being knowledgeable and accessible. Uh, loyalty developed from continually meeting customers' content needs. Uh, brand loyalty is built on the foundation of every interaction your customer has with your business. The key is to always meet or exceed expectations with each of your encounters. Um, obviously loyal customers will recommend your brand to friends and family. Um, consistency in delivering quality and relevant content is the new way uh, to maximise your ongoing uh, customer loyalty. Now I've got an example here for you. Um, You've obviously heard of Poolworks, it's a fairly um, well-known brand uh, within the industry. They specialise in pool and spa maintenance services as well as um, uh, safety inspections and repairs. This year in January uh, we, as many of you know, experienced some pretty heavy and, and destructive storms. The team at Poolworks at Bribey Island and Burpin Gary they used content marketing techniques to offer a, a free uh, post storm pool recovery advice for their followers. The business promoted their blog via uh, the Facebook page and it's an eye catching graphic and an engaging question as a headline, storms, pool affected by recent weather conditions, um, urging the person viewing that content to go further. Um, it provided the followers to an in-depth blog post on their website which gave them free tips on, on how to deal with pool equipment damage um, and, and, and flooding and, and debris um, and, and the like. Uh, an incredibly engaging tool and one that was very successful. So social media for content marketing, um, who are the main players? 
uh, obviously we're seeing you know Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn uh, and YouTube uh, as, as the big hitters. Google Plus is certainly starting to emerge um, and then you see a number of the associated um, social media platforms which actually feed into those top five or six uh, in order to start generating enough groundswell uh, to um, achieve regular status as a social media platform. Um, we'll be addressing obviously a number of these emerging platforms as we go through uh, the presentation. A lot of people ask around, you know, what, what, um, what's better, you know, content marketing or, or search engine optimization, um, or SEO I'll call it. Uh, SEO uses algorithms and tools to increase the chances of a website appearing in your online search. Now the difference between content marketing and SEO is that content marketing aims to create content that people want to read and engage with. SEO's aim really is to create content that pleases search engines. Now what this means for business is, is, is that publishing more quality online content is now the best way to get your business found on the internet. Um, uh, algorithms within the search engines are actually becoming very smart and they're recognising the difference between uh, say keyword saturation and meaningful content which is something that we all need to be very aware of. I'm just going to take you through um, two polls and I'd like everyone to um, uh, participate. I'm just going to bring up the poll now. So, right, okay. Um, so how many social ma media platforms does your business use? I'm just going to give you a few seconds to uh, enter your details in and I'll, I'll show the poll in just a couple of seconds. Right, I'm going to close the poll now um, and we'll be able to share those results. So as you can see, um, uh, people today are using mainly uh, just one platform and as we, as we venture further on down the line we're seeing that uh, the majority of businesses use one or two. Um, it's really encouraging to see that um, there are 14% uh, of um, uh, our uh, listeners using five or more. Just also keep in mind that what I'm referring to is the use of social media platforms within a business context. Okay, so now I'm going to take you on to our next question which is which platforms do you currently have for your business? I've just launched it now. I'll give you a few seconds to fill that out. Okay, I'm just closing the poll. And I'll share this with you. Obviously, um, Facebook is uh, without question the most used social platform by businesses and it's great to see quite a lot of use of um, other platforms such as Twitter and YouTube uh, and LinkedIn. Um, unfortunately, due to the type of polls we have here today, we can't go specifically into the other uh, platforms that people are using. Um, but it's great to see that there is a high level of engagement within those most used uh, social platforms. So going on to content marketing on, on, on popular platforms such as Facebook, it's the world's leading social network uh, and there's over 1 billion users, uh, an incredible uh, amount. Um, it's a great way to stay connected with customers on a site that we all who use Facebook visit at least once a day uh, to check content. 
Um, again, a great way to deliver relevant engaging information that can be liked or shared or commented on and it facilitates the embedding of third party applications to allow for greater visibility uh, of content for users. So the importance of how to use Facebook. Um, I'll just take you through a few key points here. Um, posting content regularly, uh, obviously having a Facebook presence will make your page appear current and dynamic and it will also keep your business top of mind with your followers. It's important to post relevant content too. Um, it will get their attention and encourage them to interact with your page including commenting or, or, or liking or sharing. Um, use graphics to grab the attention of your audience from the other items in their news feeds um, in order to obviously generate cut through and, and make sure that it's relevant and keep it fresh mixing up your choice of images uh, using a range of graphics uh, such as you know, photographs or videos, um, Instagram photographs as well. Uh, make sure you have fun through your engagement with your followers and involve the encouragement of interactions when you can. So answer their questions and, and, and have conversations. It will help build your reputation as trustworthy and accessible um, and help further build your relationship with them uh, as time goes on. Also keep it short. Um, keep the posts and descriptions short so that your followers, uh, they can read your post in an instant and, and decide whether or not they need to uh, go on further with their level of um, action. Uh, and ensure on, on, on action, make sure there is a call to action. Um, share or engage with your information and, and, and ask them to interact, to like, to, to comment uh, and, and, and to share their thoughts with you uh, on, on, on what you're posting. Twitter, um, it uses short bursts of information. It's, it's limited to 140 characters or less. Um, users can retweet and share their tweets and also shorten links to particular sites or comments or blogs or videos in order to maximise their descriptor. Um, uh, and it's a very easy way to monitor online sentiment and trends. Um, we'll take you now to a, a example. Uh, I've got Black Milk up here, which is a, a company that's based in southeast Queensland. Um, they're, a, they're a fashion label uh, and they are well and truly um, uh, utilising social media platforms in an incredibly effective manner. Um, it's the humanisation of this content that, that they're really striking it rich and getting a, a, a fairly substantial level of followers if you put that level of followers in the context of other Queensland based businesses. So how do you generate that level of uh, interest and interaction? Um, follow others in your industry with, with uh, similar interests and, and other relevant people. It will allow you to track Twitter topics and, and conversations of interest and provide you with an opportunity to engage in feedback. Humanisation is also very important. Um, make sure you post comments and thoughts to personalise yourself and your business. They could include your thoughts on a particular industry topic uh, or event or unique events and happenings within your business which could be around a new product or uh, even receiving uh, a commendation or an award. Um, retweeting is also incredibly important. Um, basically it's, it's for existing posts from other users and a way of sharing with with your audience that you're keeping track of the latest events and trends. It also builds goodwill with the person who originally tweeted that information because it helps to promote their Twitter presence and content. Um, hashtags have grown uh, in, in popularity in the last one to two years and they're basically searchable topics. So it can be used to generate greater awareness of tweeted content and provides a simple way to search for topics of interest and, and if it's promoted correctly, um, hashtags can trend and attract more individual users to the discussion. Make sure you keep it short. Um, obviously there's a 140 character limit. Uh, by keeping them even shorter, it, it allows others to retweet 
uh, and comment on their um, on your commentary while remaining within their character limit. Um, a short and insightful comment has the potential to be retweeted uh, many times. So give your followers a little bit of room to personalise their retweets. And importantly, monitor trends. Um, if if you're online within this platform and and you're um, looking at the trending topics, it, it allows you to track the big topics of discussion around the world. Um, and and hence is the example of black milk. Um, it's uh, it's incredibly effective way to continually engage with your audience. The next social platform I'll take you through is LinkedIn. Um, now obviously it's a professional networking site and, and when it first started it was very much a, a human resource capacity but as time has gone on uh, LinkedIn has gone to great lengths to increase the level of capacity and, and reasons for why people engage um, in, in ongoing dialogue within the site. It facilitates networking and the exchanging of ideas um, and importantly contacts and links uh, both within your specific geographic area um, uh, as well as globally uh, so you can keep up with the latest trends that are occurring throughout different geographies. Um, and it's a great opportunity for you to, to establish yourself as a knowledge leader. Um, obviously, you know, it can be used to share blogs or white papers, uh, videos and news articles, uh, opinion pieces, and um, obviously your uh, CV. Now, YouTube's the second most popular search engine uh, after Google. Um, It allows people to watch videos rather than rather than reading text, uh, and and that's certainly uh, it, it, it has become a uh, one of the most effective ways to generate uh, cut through to your audience. It's very inexpensive. Um, it can be embeddable within other types of platforms such as your your, your own company website, uh, Facebook pages, and links through to Twitter and, Pin, uh, and Pinterest. Um, importantly, it's it's a good idea to include a call to action in your video to direct people uh, to your website for, for, for more information and to insert keywords in your title, um, you know, description tags and, and video narrative to assist with the vis, uh, video searchability within the um, SEOs. So here's a couple of examples that I'm providing you today. Um, BCF Boating, Camping, Fishing, again, uh, a company that um, is based here in Queensland, uh, is one of the leaders in the development of relevant and informative content for, for, for marketing purposes. The example I've got here is tips on tailor fishing. Um, now you wouldn't normally expect there to be 15,000 people uh, interested in knowing how to um, how to catch tailor, uh, but BCF has proved that through providing meaningful content online, they go beyond the actual products that they're using within these videos and creating that level of engagement that people appreciate. And through that appreciation of the content, there's a, there's a higher likelihood that the people who have viewed that video uh, and who are familiar with BCF will then go to BCF to buy um, the accessories they need to increase their chances of um, catching Taylor. Uh, the other example I've given you there um, is with uh, Debella, again, um, a Queensland based company. They do a great job of humanising their content. Um, uh, you know, it, it's using um, uh, using the head of the company as well as their staff uh, to engage in a really meaningful way. Uh, and, and although it doesn't quite get the 15,000 hits, it still provides a level of engagement with people in an online uh, environment that they never previously would have had access to. So today I'm now going to take you through the, the, a step-by-step -step process in how we put together content marketing strategies. Um, the importance of any strategy is to ensure a level of simplicity um, so you don't get bogged down uh, and can continue to further refine and develop your strategy as time goes on. Firstly, we'll take you through step one, which is um, assessment. And it's an important step um, to 
understand your intent, intended audience, who they are, where they are and, and, and what they're interested in. Um, I've got an example here for super cheap auto. Uh, now, a lot of people wouldn't think that um, spark plugs are that interesting and um, however, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a crucial element of, of the performance of your vehicles and, and by sharing valuable content and information about something so simple as a spark plug can generate a level of loyalty and communication in an online environment which ultimately will end up selling more spark plugs for super cheap auto. And so what have they done? Um, they've determined who, you know, who their audience is and they've, they did that by initially, um, uh, pardon me, <coughs> they took the time initially to understand who their target audience was. So knowing your audience will help guide your decisions regarding the ultimate goal of your content marketing efforts and the best type of content to post. Um, to analyse your audience and, and who they are, look at um, uh, look at their age, uh, their occupation, their financial status, uh, hobbies and interests, identifiable traits, complaints or concerns and importantly how you can actually help them. Where is your audience? Um, it's important to determine where they are accessing their information online and this involves understanding the websites and, and, and platforms and blogs that resonate and connect with your target audience to ensure that their posts will have effective exposure and that it's worth their time investing in you. Um, now the places that customers currently access might include review sites like uh, Urban Spoon or True Local, uh, uh, TripAdvisor as well as other blogs and relevant websites and podcasts. Um, so again, it's important to have that spread uh, across your audience and understand where they're at. What is your audience interested in? Um, you first need to do a little bit of research and understand um, what it is in fact that they are interested in and as a business owner or a manager, uh, sometimes being too close to the day-to-day -day operations of your business may in fact impede uh, your view on how your customers perceive you or your industry um, and your associated products and services. So as an initial step, it's, it's, it's to undertake a listening phase um, to determine what's actually being said online about your business or industry. Um, now that might include reviewing relevant blog sites, um, monitoring uh, review sites that have reviews posted about your business and importantly your competitors, checking media sites and mentions, um, joining groups to see what people have been saying uh, and noting the common topics and, and concerns and complaints um, that have been posted in the online environment as well. Step two is define. It's becoming part of the conversation. Um, before entering into the online conversation, it's essential to know how you will approach your content marketing and how you can add value for your target audience. Um, how will you differentiate yourself to make sure that your content is valuable and that it stands out? Um, so becoming part of the conversation, what makes your product or service the best and what differentiates you as the provider of that product service as opposed to say your competitors and what experience does your product or service provide and that's really crucial in making sure you get that level of engagement. Your writing style and format is also very important. Um, it's crucial that, that how you know, how friendly or corporate you choose to present your content may affect the way it's received and then how your business is perceived. Um, you may choose to take an informal approach to your content and publish popular or uh, amusing images or, or, or memes and videos um, or you might choose to keep your content formal and, and publish only those items that are directly related to your business. Um, your style will largely be decided by the type of business you run and the expectations and information needs of your audience. One way to determine your writing style is to consider how you would relate your audience in a direct face-to-face uh, -face conversation. Uh, do you joke with your customers or do you prefer to present a more serious image? 
um, and your style will represent you and your business online so it should reflect uh, your identity as well. I've got an example here of fly fishing versus jet boating. Now it's they're both within the marine industry however the way I engage with someone who's interested in fly fishing is going to be entirely different with how I engage with a customer who's interested in jet boating. Um, so it's important to distinguish what it is that you're actually trying to provide them from a content perspective. The next stage is to um, develop. Uh, so proofread everything and, and your audience is going to expect that your content's engaging and also well written. So proofread all of your content, even, even your tweets to ensure that there are no spelling or grammar mistakes. Um, Use an engaging headline. Um, uh, this is something that within our industry uh, we've traditionally done in the past anyway to attract the um, focus or attention of a journalist who might be writing some editorial for us. The headline is and, and, and the first paragraph or piece of information or text was the most important part of that news release going out and it was it would then determine how successful our approach was going to be with, with, um, with media outlets. So make sure it's engaging. Incorporate key search phrases. Um, so incorporate keywords and, and relevant phrases to increase likelihood of your content marketing being found via search engines. Um, restrict yourself from the hard sell. So again, content marketing isn't about the hard sell. Um, it is about forming a relationship with your audience and then taking them through the process uh, of, of engagement so that they can feel um, confident and, and um, trusting of you that they will then uh, engage through a, a, financial inter um, a financial interaction. Share the content. Um, if you've read an interesting article, it's, uh, it's important that you um, tweet or, or share it with your followers. Uh, encourage them to share the content that you've created to broaden your reach uh, by including the share buttons on your content for easy sharing to uh, Facebook or Twitter um, and, and Google. And use visuals to capture attention. The use of images is a really effective method of getting immediate attention. Um, of course it's important to, to ensure that it's relevant to your audience so that they stop um, scrolling through a very cluttered social media environment and take notice of your content. Uh, generating videos for your content marketing campaign can be a, a very simple and, and, and also very fun to create. Uh, I mentioned Black Milk before. Um, they recently, I'm, I'm sure you've all heard of their viral video that's been going around the Harlem Shake. Black Milk within the space of two to three days actually put their own version of the Harlem Shake together and generated nearly 70,000 views online. Um, it's because Black Milk understood their audience and demographic is young and, and aware of current viral trends. So a very cost effective means of generating that level of engagement to 70,000 people in the online environment. Um, a brilliant strategy by Black Milk uh, once again. Of course use your logo. Um, going through all this effort to produce this, this meaningful content online, make sure you, you, you um, include your logo with it so people can distinguish uh, between the content that you produce and what others produce and begin to um, uh, uh, take their loyalty uh, in, in toward you rather than your competitors. Step four is, is um, to activate um, so once you've developed your content, um, the next step is to post it on your chosen platforms and implement your content marketing strategy. Uh, promote your content through your different available channels which will of course include your website, uh, but Facebook, uh, Twitter uh, and other different available channels um, uh, including your email database. If you've launched a new social media platform, make sure that you have a link to it from your website. And to ensure that you're constantly developing and uploading new content, it's worth creating your own editorial calendar. Now this is important from a planning perspective. 
It will ensure that you've mapped out when you're going to produce and launch different content pieces throughout the year. And that'll be associated with some of the different promotional um, campaigns or initiatives that you might you, you might be uh, becoming engaged with. And it should include content ideas, events, headlines, um, as well as obviously responsibilities for the team uh, as to uh, who's going to be managing that level of engagement. Of course, it's important to monitor the effectiveness of your content and have the ability to change your tactics if something's not working. So if you're not getting enough hits on your blog, um, try promoting it through other social media platforms and if they're not reading a long form blog, that try producing and uploading a video uh, instead. Um, so it's important to keep it fresh and to post regularly using a range of methods to help you connect and, and, and get your audience engaged. So the use of emerging platforms. Um, the first platform that I've provided uh, here in today's presentation um, is around Pinterest. Um, it's a digital scrapbook that allows its users to share photos and images through a pinboard style web display. Um, they pin pictures that they find interesting or, or motivating or encouraging and, and, and repinning is one of the great qualities of Pinterest as it can lead to your um, business receiving greater exposure and gaining new clients by providing links back to your pin board which in turn then links back to your website. As you can see the um, Evans and Evans uh, Pools Pinterest page has a number of boards based around the experience of their product. So they're not necessarily talking about the pool, they're talking about a summer barbie and ideas for a poolside garden and entertaining ideas, um, a really effective means of, of creating meaningful content. So how does it look? Well, excuse me, <coughs> um, post pictures of how your product can be used. Um, it's a visual site so it lends itself to uh, showing customers and potential customers all the things you can do with your product or your services. Uh, you can also use Pinterest to post uh, videos, um, pardon me, of how others have used them. Um, a great way to collect customer testimonials. You can obviously with uh, your followers permission uh, post photos of, of, of them and, and write nice things about uh, uh, you know, your product or services and include an image of their own handwritten note or, 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 or an email that they've shared with you. Um, also share tips and information. So presenting yourself as an expert in your field and sharing your knowledge with others is a really proven way to build customers uh, and Pinterest offers a way to do this visually. Uh, obviously let customers look behind the scenes as we saw with the Debella example that I provided earlier. Share pictures of your behind the scenes operations so they feel like they are um, uh, inside your company. Instagram is, is another uh, photo sharing uh, social network where users take pictures and apply digital filters and then share. Um, importantly for Instagram it can be used throughout the other the suite of other uh, platforms like Facebook and Twitter. Um, it confines the photos to a square shape and then um, uh, used by mobile phone cameras. Uh, the platform encourages sharing of photographs using hashtags similar uh, uh, very much similar to um, Twitter. Um, so what are we doing essentially? Um, well it's it's humanizing. Um, build an emotional connection with your audience. Uh, individuals tend to use Instagram to upload photos of their friends or, or their you know uh, their food or or a sunset they might be experiencing as a way to show their personality. So businesses can use Instagram in a similar way uh, to help humanize their business. Um, upload photos of staff days or events or, or community days um, and for instance an award that you or your company might have received and it will really show that your company is friendly and accessible. Um, hashtags uh, are very important um, for search for photos. So include a hashtag with a relevant keyword and it'll increase the likelihood of a photo being found in a search and then viewed by interested parties. Um, this hashtag function can be used to build an engagement campaign. Uh, the example I've got here for you is uh, Tourism Australia. 
and and what they've done is is encourage followers to hashtag their Instagram photos with the hashtag see Australia uh, for an opportunity to be featured on the Tourism Australia profile. Uh, a great way to engage. Uh, a very new uh, form of um, platform is is Posse. Now I do need to let you know that Posse is currently only available through the um, uh, through Apple, but I would hazard a guess and say that that will change and and also include um, Android uh, device capability over the coming months as this particular application grows. Um, it's basically a social search engine that lets users. Uh, search for what they want and, and, and get results based on their friends' recommendations. Uh, you know, an example would be a search for the best coffee in Brisbane. Um, a posse would provide you with uh, recommendations from your specific posse, which is your friends and, and their friends, and then provides a result based on their feedback. Uh, users create streets containing their favourite businesses, and these streets appear in a visually dynamic way, um, compete with you know, your, your, your company logos. Now, although the opportunity for varied content marketing is currently limited compared to other emerging platforms, Posse can benefit a business with a physical location uh, to help generate loyalty and recommendations. Uh, they can choose to either have a free listing or, or for a monthly fee, businesses can opt to improve the look of their Posse virtual business and have uh, activity reports that detail that month's uh, customer ads and 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 user comments about the business. Um, business can also send virtual thank you cards to followers who uh, have added their business place to a posse street, and and or um, send actual physical gifts to these uh, to these users. Uh, so expect to see a lot more of that over the coming months. Social Cam um, is is another emerging platform to keep an eye out for. Um, it, it, its features include a video feed, uh, popular page, friends, um, uh, ability to integrate again with Facebook and Twitter and YouTube, uh, the major social platforms, um, and the ability for people to customise videos using their built-in uh, filters. Um, it provides an easy way to uh, provide expert content to your audience. Um, so, uh, for instance, a gardening shop could create a social cam video explaining how to pot a particular plant rather than just simply writing a blog. Um, an engaging platform for two-way uh, conversation. So customers can reply either with a comment or even a video with their own. Um, engaging and in, 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 in interesting videos will, will help to continually connect with your audience, uh, build loyalty and long-lasting relationships. So the more attention your video receives, the better. It's more likely that other users uh, you're not yet affiliated with your brand may stumble across your video and begin to follow you. Another social media platform is The Vine. Um, it's an application that allows users to create and share uh, short six second videos using their phone which can then be shared on a variety of social networking services like uh, Twitter and Facebook. It allows both normal video and stop motion where the video can take a series of short clips and then splice them together into a montage. What really makes this innovative though is the recording technique uh, that, that, that Vine uses. So rather than just simply hit a record button as you would normally with social cam, the application asks you to touch the screen to record, and then if you take your finger off the screen, vinyl stop recording. Um, if you put your finger back on the screen, it will resume recording. So you can stop start your recording as many times as you like, which is an incredibly fun and engaging um, way to um, generate interest amongst uh, your followers. It provides an opportunity for the small business to create short and catchy videos that really humanise and embody the brand that you're trying to uh, get out there uh, on the platforms. Um, and because they're short, um, this application can really benefit businesses that have an edgy or a quirky reputation. Um, videos made through the Vine can include footage of events or, or quick commentaries, um, tips or clues about new products and services uh, that you've got on offer or, or even 
you know, prize giveaways. Google Plus, obviously everyone's very familiar with Google Plus now. It's been around for quite some time. Um, it's Google social network and it, and it targets both social and business users. Um, the framework incorporates circles uh, that allow users to choose who they publish information and content to, which I guess the benefit of which, uh, it gives you um, greater control over, over who can see um, uh, posted content. Now, as it's been created by Google, it provides significant search engine optimization opportunities for your business. Um, all users log into Google Plus when they check their email. So once they're logged in, the search function per personalizes the results based on comments and, and pluses, which um, are very, very similar to a like on uh, Facebook. Um, so a person logged into Google Plus who might search for coffee local may get a different answer to another user searching for the same keywords as their friend circle uh, and their recommendations or endorsements um, are different also. For businesses using content marketing techniques, uh, this provides an opportunity to increase your search rankings by creating dynamic and engaging profile that people will want to follow and, and, and plus. Um, Businesses can post updates, which might be uh, links or embedded videos, uh, photos or, or, or even infographics. Um, another real benefit is authorship, uh, which is a system that allows the content authors to have their name and picture appear in Google search results. Um, as per the example I've just got there at the bottom of the screen. Now the addition of the name and image adds credibility and noticeability to the search results, which can lead to increased search ranking um, and web hits. Um, also establishes yourself um, as a uh, expert, a, a, a topic expert, uh, which again increases the level of loyalty that your um, existing and potential customers have for you. So where to uh, from here? Um, what is it that we need to do to uh, continue to engage and, and, and to monitor? Um, it's important to track and understand how effective your efforts have been in connecting with your target audience uh, because this will feed back to the refinement of your strategy. Um, is it working or, or is it, you know, is a particular platform worth your investment in time? Um, only measurement will be able to uh, provide you with that answer. So look at the number of followers and, and likes or favourites, uh, retweets, mentions and, and, and particularly comments, uh, which is um, uh, a very um, uh, engaging uh, uh, means of communication between yourself and the customer. Uh, website hits are obviously very important and something that you've no doubt been um, uh, uh, looking at very closely uh, in recent years as you've developed your business. And importantly, the length of time that people spend on your website. Um, these days through your measurement platforms, um, you can see um, specifically what people have been looking at on your website and how long they've been engaging with that piece of content. So you'll determine whether or not they've just browsed and clicked through something or whether or not they've actually engaged and read or, or, or viewed something. Um, so look at those more meaningful levels of engagement that people have, have connected with and grow them because it will ultimately then grow um, your uh, level of support and loyalty amongst your um, potential client uh, database. Um, continuous improvement. Um, it's about making constant enhancements to make sure you keep hitting your targets. Uh, look for um, ways to make things better or uh, easier or faster or cheaper. Um, reflect on what you've done and how you've done it. Um, helps to make your future activities more efficient and, and successful. Um, so consider whether or not your message is still on track. Um, are you posting enough content? Uh, and, and what is your competition doing? Uh, and it'll help you to create content that truly addresses the needs of your customers and sets you apart from your competition. So in summary, 
content marketing is about providing valued information to your customers and not about the hard sell. Take time to assess and understand your audience so that you're creating relevant and valuable content. Understand your own business and the value it brings to customers beyond the product um, and ensure that you're marketing uh, on the current popular platforms that already have large followings. Um, you can then move on to the trial of emerging platforms to see if they work for your business. Um, Baseline your current status before launching your content marketing campaign to measure success. Know where you're starting from so you can ensure that six to 12 months down the track um, uh, you're, you're making a, 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 a correct judgement on which particular platforms are best for you and your business. Um, now there is further information available uh, and we've got uh, four links here. I'd encourage everyone to get onto each of these links um, so they can uh, review more content. Uh, and I'll now just pass you back to Helen for our Q&A. Thanks, Doug, and thanks so much for your presentation. Uh, we're going to jump straight in. We've got just under 10 minutes left in today's session, and we've had quite a lot of questions come through. So thank you, everybody, for your participation. <coughs> Doug, let's get into it. Uh, where do you draw the line between creating and sharing valuable content uh, versus charging for the content, particularly if you're a service provider? So how much should you give away for free, basically? Uh, Helen, I mean, that's, that's a really interesting question. Um, uh, the important thing to note is that you, you need to offer a level of connection so that people firstly have an awareness of who you are. Um, if you're able to provide your potential customers uh, with an engaging um, level of content, whether that be through a white paper or a blog uh, explaining the service that you provide, um, it's not necessarily giving something away for free. It's just giving your business the ability to communicate online and grab the attention of your potential customer. Um, because engagement is more about ongoing contact and once the customer becomes, um, or potential customer becomes uh, used to the type of content that you're providing and how your services can improve their lives or what they do, it's at that point in time that you can go to uh, a greater depth of um, content delivery or service delivery uh, where you can start injecting um, uh, means of payment or financial transaction. Uh, but if you're not getting your content out there in the online space and, and at least sharing some of your intellectual property or your expertise, um, there's a chance and a risk that uh, your service will be uh, overlooked for another business that is providing meaningful content. Hmm. So really about understanding understanding your audience and also I guess a, a judgement call on each individual business's behalf on how much they, they're prepared to share to get that level of engagement with that audience. Absolutely. It really forms part of that initial process of the strategy development. Know what your parameters are and then produce content within those parameters so you're not just simply giving everything away. Um, all you're providing them with is the carrot that's required to grab their attention in an incredibly cluttered environment um, and, and from that point on is where you start looking at ways in which to insert the financial models. Mm. Yeah. Interestingly, on that point, we've had a question about audience identification. Um, you know, what's the best way to identify the audience? Is it, you know, should should a company invest in market research, or should they conduct an online survey of their own database? Uh, what oh, would you recommend in that case? Well, it's important to know what you've got to work with from the start. So, if you've got an email database and you're not regularly getting in contact with them to ask for their feedback, um, you need to start doing it immediately. Uh, your customers are the people who want to tell you 
how you can provide a better product or a service. So that's the first port of call. Get in touch with those people who you have already established some level of loyalty and, and engagement with. Um, email databases are a great way to get started. Um, again, when we went through that initial process of the, the, the content marketing strategy development, you've got to listen to who your audience is and that doesn't happen overnight. Um, you need to set up the dashboards that can um, uh, identify feedback about your brand or uh, your product or the type of service that you provide and, and, and listen to what they're saying. Um, if, if they're trying to um, provide constructive feedback on how something should be improved, then it's a lot cheaper than conducting a series of focus groups. Um, so yeah, it, I mean it's you know measuring and then uh, listening, sorry, and then measuring are in incredibly cost-effective ways to uh, increase your business's uh, performance. Thank you. Um, today, Doug, we've covered I guess a number of different platforms that uh, businesses could look at. Can there ever be too many platforms that a business is subscribed to? Uh, good question, Helen. Um, it really depends on the type of business that, that you're a part of. Uh, um, obviously, it's important to, to, to start from um, a basic level. And when I say basic level, you know, I mean Facebook and Twitter and, and YouTube, um, as well as an emerging platform such as Google Plus, uh, to create the frameworks that can integrate and share content. Um, once you've established those platforms and got them operating through your calendar of activities, you can then start looking at emerging platforms that are going to actively engage with, with potential customers uh, or followers. Um, yeah, so look, I, I can't say that there, there is too many platforms that people use, but um, I think it's important that businesses get their head around uh, the top four or five platforms first before they start engaging in other mediums with, uh, with their potential clientele. Mm. Yeah. And I guess it's a question of resources as well, isn't it? Because if you're not going to really you know, drive the engagement through the number of platforms you've signed up to, then you're not actually going to achieve the results you're looking for? No, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, there, there's nothing um, worse than having a static piece of social media uh, platform um, for for uh, you know potential customers to look at. Uh, you know, if if you've got a particular blog that that um, two years ago you posted a particular article on, and you haven't engaged since, um, people are going to pick up the fact that you haven't used that 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 um, that service for a period of two years, um, and then just simply move on. Uh, to another competitor who might be actively engaging within the platform. So when, when you're choosing your platforms, make sure you've got the resources necessary to continue consistent levels of content engagement. Um, that's incredibly important. Yeah, good question, Helen. Hmm. We've, uh, we've, we've had another interesting one, um, something around, uh, you know, particularly how you c convince managers of <laughs> and business owners themselves of what to do in terms of you know is content marketing a phase um, how do we know this type of marketing is going to be still around and still successful next year oh look um, content marketing is uh, what I believe uh, anyway I think content marketing is here to stay um, the marketing content um, is uh, is definitely the new way of engagement and and uh, the generation of, of loyalty. Um, everyone at some stage of their day, every single day of the week, engages with a social platform or, or there is a level of engagement whether or not it be through um, you know uh, writing emails or, or um, you know these days shopping online. So um, a lot of their decisions are made within the online environment. Uh, whereas traditionally they might have gone to their friends in a face-to-face -face environment and received a recommendation. Now they've got access to not just their friends' recommendations, um, but a globe 
of, of, of people recommending uh, particular products and services. Um, this, this level of engagement is brought about by the proper utilisation of content marketing. Uh, it's, I, I believe it's definitely here to stay and that businesses um, need to take notice uh, in, in developing strategies so they can become a part of this um, uh, emerging uh, means of marketing. Hmm. Thank you, Doug. Look, just one final quick question, because um, I know this is a passion of yours as well. In terms of you know, monitoring, um, particularly online with social media, what sort of tools would you use to monitor, I guess, you, you know, how well your content marketing is going and how it's being received? Well, interestingly, um, each of the social platforms that you use will undoubtedly have a um, framework where you can measure the success of your um, content uh, and how it integrates. Um, it's inexpensive uh, and oftentimes free um, for, for you to be able to properly measure uh, the effectiveness of your content. Um, uh, you know, f Facebook business pages um, already provide you with, with the necessary framework to measure the success levels of your content integration um, and so do the other platforms. So uh, there are, there are um, uh, uh, sort of software, there is software out there that can actually pull measurement platforms into one location so you can um, uh, on a daily basis review and then measure uh, and refine then your strategy and what you're going to be putting in, into the online environment. Um, and I'd encourage uh, everyone participating today to, to get online and actually search for those types of um, uh, platforms where you can manage uh, multiple social media sites. Excellent. Well, I'm afraid that is all we have time for today. So thanks so much, Doug, for your presentation and uh, Q&A time. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you everyone for your participation. <laughs> we hope that you enjoyed this webinar and found it useful for your business. Uh, we will be sending out an evaluation survey very soon and we'd really appreciate it if you could provide your feedback. Uh, thank you again for attending and hope you have a lovely afternoon.